Okay, so the first thing you're going to want to do is make yourself some of the stinger hooks. I've got some 30 pound braid here and I'm just going to cut off some pieces that are, I don't know, about as long as my line rest on there. Maybe some 10 inch pieces or so, right? And uh, you're going to get you some uh, like number six octopus style hooks. These ones are the blackbird ones that uh, are sold as a salmon or steelhead hook. And what you'll do is run that line back through there. So you leave it on here and you even up the ends. And then if you look at it, pretty much you just have it on a loop. And then what you'll do is tuck the hook through the loop so it pulls tight and looks like this. All right, and then once you get that on there, you can see that the line has, uh, they're, they're laid right next to each other. You don't want them twisted, you want them laying right next to each other. And then get yourself some Dave's Flex Cement or similar, and your bodkin. Dip that in there and get some glue on it, and you put the, the glue right on the line like this. And get some up on the hook itself, too. It'll dry really thin. And what that does is it holds your trailing hook or your stinger hook uh, straight out. So it's not just flopping loose and flopping around and grabbing your tippet. Okay, your next step is uh, to start building your fly. So what I'm going to use is a cheap number two minnow hook. You can get them at Walmart or wherever because we're not going to use the barb. We're just going to cut that off, but we're going to use it for the moment. This is just a blank. I know people like those bent wire forms you can buy. Uh, I prefer to use a cheap hook because I like the eyelet better than the big bent wire eyelets. So stick a bead on there if you choose, or you can tie some lead eyes on there, whatever you like, some tumbell eyes. Uh, so your first order of operation, obviously, is put down a base of thread. Uh, then what we're going to do is you're going to grab your, your stinger hook that you made earlier with the glue on it. Yes, I'm going to put mine in the up position because I'm going to put marabou on the top side to help it stay up. You'll see how that goes. You know, this is a decent distance or you can go a little longer if you like. Whatever suits you for what you think your stinger distance should be. So put that up on top of the hook, tighten her down, and you'll see how it straightened right up. It's because those two lines are glued right next to each other and not twisted. So that kind of forces the hook to stay in the position that you put it in. So I'm just going to make a few wraps on that. And then I'm going to add some super glue. I'm going to add quite a bit because I really want that glued down well. I'm going to make a few wraps down there. And, and it's important right here because when the fish is tugging on this, at the, all the pressure is going to be right there. So you want plenty of thread wraps right here. You got to make a nice, heavy, stopping knot of line right there. And then you'll see up here it's still glued together. And what you can do is you can just pull that apart. Right? And I'm going to pull these back so that they're side by side on here still. Glue those down. So you cut off your extras. So basically it's just up and back. And I'm going to add some more glue. Because I want this very glued to the hook. You might have the idea that this could pull off. Perhaps it could, but I've caught a lot of fish with these. And I have never had one come apart on me, so if that does happen, it hasn't happened to me. I think super glue is pretty magical. So just work your way up, work your way back, work your way up. Put as, much, put as many wraps on there as you think necessary to really fasten it down good. All right, then you just need your tail. Grab two pieces of marabou. Again, you know, you want to look for 
which way they're bent for and stack the tips nicely with each other like such so I don't need these to be any longer than this. So I'm gonna cut these off. See, that works right about like that. There's lots of ways to tie in marabou. This is just how I do this particular pattern. Okay, uh, then what you need to do is find some kind of flash or tinsel that you're desirous to use and as per usual you want to pull off some of those threads and tie down just the core thread so that oops so that you don't hook your finger there pull off just some of that core thread so you're not tying in a big lump of stuff make your fly kind of fat so tie that in work your thread toward the front unhook your own finger again all right then we're just going to wrap this up toward the front give yourself I don't know a quarter inch or so maybe an eighth of an inch between the bead and where you've tied this off uh, because we're gonna tie in some marabou right there and we don't want to crowd the bead okay so then what you now need is a couple more pieces of marabou we're gonna tie these in at the front you know, one thing, I know you, you see people that spiral wrap them around, and, and that's certainly a way to do it. Uh, another thing you can do if you want the fly to float in a specific upright position, like with your hook facing up, if you create a, a lot of fluff on the top of the fly, it will right itself generally and float that way, unless you get it uneven. So I'm going to show you how that works. Just get some of this and sort of I'm going to tie it on the two shoulders. I don't like to go back too much further than just the edge of that, so I'm going to tie this in right here. And then once you get a couple wraps, then you can like straighten it out and get it where you think you want it. Sort of at the, I'm just going to like three quarters of an angle or like, you know, nine o'clock or ten o'clock position or so. I'm going to trim off the excess. And I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Try and get it about the same length, same volume. If you get two marabous that are one's fatter and one's thinner, well then yeah, it's going to lean to one side a little differently. So now I'll tie this one in on this side. You know, if you don't tie it in exact, that's okay because you, you just make a couple wraps and then you check and see and you can move it around a little bit how you like. I think that looks pretty good. This is going to be one I'm going to slow drift. So I want it to have lots of lifelike body on it. Put some super glue on there, on the threads. Flip that around. Before you let that dry, make sure they're on top how you want them. And if it's not, you can give it a little twist. <laughs> Make it put it right where you want it. Okay, then all we have left to do is cut off the hook we're not using. Pull that down. I'm using these. Yeah, there you have it. Uh, one last thing I'd like to show you. Uh, I've been cutting off sections of drinking straws like this. And you just slide them on the end of your streamers. Helps you get a bunch of them in the box without them being all big and fluffy like this. And uh, here's how the fly looks uh, in the water. This is a good pattern for deep, slow pools, especially for a steelhead, which is what I make it for. So you just kinda, you don't have to give it much motion. If you throw this out in a deep pool and just let whatever little bit of current is there take it, it'll go and just twitch it, just give it a little tiny burnt. There's little itty bitty twitches. Put some life into it. Could be a sculpin, could be anything. Just a great big attractor pattern, really. All right, so there's my articulated streamer. Thanks for watching, and uh, happy fishing.